Welcome to the Geek Easy, fellow geeks. Let me... Okay, a little too bright, but I can't do anything about that. Uh, open a beverage of your choice, because today I will be reviewing something that I got today with my uh, new releases. That uh, uh, World's Finest was the only DC book I got today. It was the only book I got. It's, uh, everything else comes out tomorrow and so I just went rooting through the back issues and I found Batman Hollywood Night volume one two and th three it is as you can see here an Elseworld book uh, came out in 2001 April, May, June of, or the cover thing is April, May, June of 2001. Uh, it's actually kind of a cool story. It is set in 1948, where uh, Batman doesn't really exist. Batman is a comic book character, and they are... Uh, shooting part of a serial, you know, like they did back in the day. There was, uh, you know, like the old Flash Gordon ones and stuff like that. Uh, each week there was a, came out weekly, each week was a new chapter, and, you know, they get, they end with a little cliffhanger, and somehow they get off, you know, get out of it, and find out the next week how they got out of it. Uh, the actor who plays him uh, is a uh, really rich actor who, you know, he was, grew up rich. He's sort of like a Bruce Wayne type, but he's not Bruce Wayne. Uh, he uh, bought the rights to Batman, started you know, making the, uh, the serials. And the serials are starting to impact the profits of some of the other studios. And the main studio, the only studio, you, other studio you really see is done called, uh, the, the, um, this guy owns uh, Gotham Studios, right? And the only other studio you hear in this one is uh, Arkham Studios. And it is run by Jack Napier, who they call the Joker, because he's, he's, he's kind of funny. And this guy's kind of like batshit crazy. And he is pissed off because it's this serial is, this guy's studio is in you know, taking some of their profits because it's doing really well. And he wants to get the rights to the Batman character. And so he tries some couple of nefarious schemes to get it by sending his, his crooks out to get it. And uh, winds up, uh, since this guy, the actor, doesn't want to uh, sell uh, he uh, the guy's name is Byron Wyatt. Byron Wyatt is the guy who plays, the, is the actor who plays Batman. So it's B.W., right? Uh, he's not selling. He's like, nope, 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 nope. And uh, so they realize with a little mole inside the studio 
this guy's studio that they're going to be shooting a scene out in the desert. And so they send some people out there and they just kill everybody on the set. Because it's like, hey, if they can't, you know, get the rights, boom, they'll do it. And then they put a bullet in the back of the head of Byron Wyatt. But he survives. And thinks, when he comes to, he thinks he's Batman and he's, he's goes to fight the bad guy to regain control. And it's, it's a really interesting uh, story. I like what they did with this. It's kind of a cool little take on this. I mean, they actually have, they actually show uh, the famous cover of, I think it's either Batman number one or uh, Detective Comics number 27, where it shows Batman and Robin swinging on the, on the, on the ropes. Pretty sure it's uh, Batman and Robin number one. Yeah, because he doesn't, Robin doesn't show up uh, until number one, something like that. But uh, it's, it was a good story. The art, it's, a, it's actually written by a guy by the name of Rob Layton. I don't think I've ever heard of him, but Dick Gian, Giordano, Giordano is the artist. And, you know, I'm sure many people have heard of him, and he, does, he did really good work on the art. And Rob Layton did, told a really good story and had a really interesting take on this whole thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, it... it just three issues so that, you know, it was succinct. The action moved along. There wasn't any extraneous points in it. There was no, you know, no extra things in there. It was really tight and just boom, boom, boom. Really well done, and I, I recommend it. So I'm going to give it a 4.75 out of 5 and say if you can get your hands on it or maybe a trade, um, I suggest you do it because it's, it's worth the money. So anyway, let me know in the comments below whether you read it or not. And if you liked it, and uh, like, subscribe, and most of all, enjoy your comics.